Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of One Man's Opinion. Yes, we have a new season, and we are kicking it off with the new Broadway play, Grey House, written by Levi Holloway and directed by Joe Mantello, running at the Lyceum Theater at 147 West 45th Street in New York City. I'll just say it right here. At the beginning, we need more horror theater. It's a genre that is almost completely ignored. I get it, though. The visceral violence and disturbing visuals that come from the horror genre makes it difficult to watch for some people, especially when you see it happening to real people on stage and not on a movie or television show that you can easily turn off or close your eyes or walk away from. It reminds me of the stage adaptation of 1984 when Winston is tortured for what felt like an eternity and audience members were attempting to flee from the middle of the house in revulsion. I'll be clear from the get-go here as well that yes, there is one scene in particular that the squeamish may want to close their eyes and plug their ears through as Chekhov's linoleum knife, at least that's what I think it is, finally serves its purpose. Max, played by Tatiana Maslany, and Henry, played by Paul Sparks, are a married couple who gets lost in a snowstorm, crash their car, and hobble over to a house they find in the woods. The setting of the playbill says cabin, but it's a house. It's kind of big to be a cabin. Living in the house is Raleigh, played by Lori Metcalf, her four daughters, her son, and a mysterious ethereal old woman, only credited as the ancient, played by Cindy Coyne. It's 1977, the phones don't work, the house looks and feels like something out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the personalities of the children are all deeply disturbing. Max and Henry take shelter as Henry recovers from a broken ankle and until the storm blows over. Meanwhile, Max attempts to reason out who the people in the house are and what their intentions are with her and her husband and if they will survive their stay. Much of the horror elements of Grey House comes from the design, Scott Pask's scenic design, Natasha Katz's lighting design, and Tom Gibbons's sound design creates a bombardment of the senses as the snow is perpetually seen blowing through the kitchen window and front door, the wind is howling, the house is creaking, speaking as it may in its own character voice. Characters appear and disappear behind and through various objects like the couch or window. What makes all this work is the intent of the story, though. Though not all is revealed as to why things are the way they are, it isn't absolutely necessary for us to know. That's one of the appeals of horror, is that horrific things happen and we never know why or fully understand. It'll be frustrating to some, for sure, as we wonder what exactly is Henry's connection to the house, why the girls and Raleigh are there in in the first place, or how the whole thing functions. As far as I'm concerned, we don't need to know. I think things are far more scary when we don't understand. There are things that are revealed along the way that help, like why the mason jars of moonshine are named after different men, who the girls are, and it's just enough to keep us intrigued to keep going. The cast, who probably all know more about what's going on than we do, are fantastic. Tatiana Maslany was out the day I was in attendance, so her understudy, Claire Carpin, was on. There didn't seem to be any issues with Carpin being on. She had a classic horror feminine hero strength about her, and her chemistry with Paul Sparks was endearing. Sparks also was great, not only displaying the fractured body of his with the broken foot, but his spirit as well as the horrors of not only his past, but the horrors of others' past start to consume him. Laurie Metcalf is fantastic as usual. She has a much more subdued role as the belabored mother of the household, almost like she is less the mother of the children, but her captive. Led by Sophia Ann Caruso as Marlo, the four girls, Millicent Simmons as Bernie, Colby Kipnis as Squirrel, and Alyssa Emily Marvin as A1656 are all delightfully disturbing. I particularly like Simmons as Bernie, who is deaf and has an ability to cause trauma on another person by counting down with her fingers and then firing a finger gun at them. Even Patrick O'Connell, who has very little dialogue as the boy, is haunting in his own simple way of staying silent and observing everything, and Cindy Coyne is probably the creepiest of all as the ethereal, the ancient, popping out of empty spaces, barely or never speaking herself, but moving like an animal almost as she seduces Henry into the house. I know I haven't given too much away here as to what Grey House is about, and that is intentional. 
It's a haunted house story with a lot of dark and horrid layers that people will have to peel away to get what they can out of it. Not everything is clear by the end, but what a thrilling ride it is to get there. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Grey House, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. You can support my channel by becoming a patron over on my Patreon channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Any little bits will help keep this show going. Also, like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the off-Broadway production of Days of Wine and Roses. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.